Hello, hope you are doing well. Today I am going to take up a poem from NCERT's English textbook for class 10. The title of the book is First Flight and the title of the poem is Amanda. This poem is written by Robin Kleen. One of Australia's most loved and awarded writers for young people. Robin Kleen has a range of works to her credit from picture books such as Thing and the Giraffe in Pepperell to middle grade stories featuring 10 year old Penny Pollard as well as young adult novels such as People Might Hear You, Games and Come Back to Show You I Could Fly. She wrote her first story at the age of 16 and has published over 20 books over her lifetime. Her works Thing and Penny Pollard's Diary were in fact adapted for television and broadcast on the Australian Children's Television Foundation's Caboodle series in 1987. Her story Hating Alison Ashley was adapted for theatrical performance as well. Other works by her can be enjoyed as audiobooks. You can always explore it. It is said about Clean that she is a marvelously gusty writer who relishes the drama of everyday life. She has won many children's literature awards including one in the human rights category for adult readers. Here is a fun fact about her. Before she became a full time writer, Clean worked as a tea lady at a warehouse, as a bookshop assistant, nurse, copper enamelist and program aide at a school for disadvantaged children. See, she wore many hats. So that gave her the opportunity to observe life from close quarters and then she creatively penned it down. Her wide variety of experience gives her work richness and depth. Clean masterfully presents the point of view young readers like you and in portrayals by her there is always humor and truth in both her prose and her poetry. So how do we the readers make the most of poetry? We can enjoy listening to the poem, we can enjoy reading the poem, we can appreciate the poem, we can connect this learning with the self and we can also learn to use new words and phrases. And in this poem you will learn the use of imperatives also. You can create a new poem. So we will be doing all of this when we go through this poem Amanda. You can open your books on page 61. Before I begin with the poem, there is one activity for you. I am now going to share a list of some of the things that children love to do. These things aren't always healthy or good for children and hence their parents, their guardians, their teachers either limit these activities or do not allow them at all. You should pay attention and pick or note those activities that your parents, guardians, elders do not allow you to do. Eating junk food, chocolates, sweets, talking with friends on phone for long hours, going out and playing with friends all day, watching television for long hours, sleeping till late in the morning, using cosmetics, applying makeup, playing video games all the time and other things. You may mention a few more. I have just jotted down a few for you. You can add more to the list. We will come back to the list once we have read the poem. And then probably you will say, yes, we are told not to do all of this. 
the protagonist of the poem by Robin Clean has similar restrictions and directives coming her way. I am going to read the poem aloud for you. As you know, poems are meant to be read aloud. You must enjoy listening and later on you can read the poem. And while I am reading the poem, please observe the punctuation marks. Punctuation marks help us get the meaning of the text. If there is a comma, that means it is a shorter pause. Sign of exclamation means there is some surprise or sadness or happiness, right? Full stop means we have come to the end of one idea and we are going to begin with the next idea. So, pay attention to the poem. Let us enjoy the poem. Do not bite your nails, Amanda. Do not hunch your shoulders, Amanda. Stop that slouching. Sit up straight, Amanda. There is a languid emerald sea where the sole inhabitant is me, a mermaid drifting blissfully. Did you finish your homework, Amanda? Did you tidy your room, Amanda? I thought I told you to clean your shoes, Amanda. I am an orphan roaming the street. I pattern soft dust with my hushed bare feet. The silence is golden. The freedom is sweet. Do not eat that chocolate, Amanda. Remember your acne, Amanda. Will you please look at me when I am speaking to you, Amanda? I am Rapunzel. I have not a care. Life in a tower is tranquil and rare. I will certainly never let down my bright hair. Stop that sulking at once, Amanda. You are always so moody, Amanda. Anyone would think that I nagged at you, Amanda. With this, we have come to the end of the poem. How did you like the poem? You must have understood that there is a person who is telling Amanda not to do certain things. The poem describes a girl named Amanda and her mother who is constantly chiding her for being careless, negligent and lacking in discipline. Do you think she is careless? Well, if she has not kept her things properly, she is careless. Well, if she is negligent about her things, like there is an example of shoes, she has not cleaned them, then that means she is negligent. Do you think she is disciplined? Certainly not if she is not doing all of this. We all should be disciplined. She is in all probability being told by her mother not to bite her nails, to keep the right posture, do not slouch. Her mother wants Amanda to sit upright. Instead, Amanda imagines herself as a mermaid who lives in a calm, relaxing life in a beautiful green sea. And now you must have observed that after each stanza, there is a stanza which is in parenthesis. So that means these lines are not spoken by anyone, but thought by Amanda. She wants to live in a calm and relaxing world, like a mermaid in the green sea. Thereafter, she is scolded for not cleaning her room and shoes, then for not doing her homework. Then Amanda loses herself in a world of make-belief and imagines herself to be an orphan because she is now fed up of being washed by her parents continuously. But do you think it is a good idea to become an orphan? She does not realize that her parents are her well wishes. Then next third stanza, she goes on to say that you know if she would have been an orphan, she would have enjoyed her freedom by making pattern 
of her bare feet on the sand. That would be a peaceful life for her indeed. What do you think? Is it correct? I do not think so. Next, Amanda is scolded for eating too many chocolates and the reason is that it will cause pimples. I think this happens in every household. Children are told not to eat chocolates for many reasons. She is also scolded for not listening to her mother. So now Amanda thinks of being Rapunzel, a character from a fairy tale and wants to live in a huge tower like her. In the tower she will be alone and will live an undisturbed life and will never allow anyone to come in. Finally, the mother asks her to stop being moody because she is not listening, because she does not want anyone to blame her for harassing her daughter. At this time, the poet has not written any reaction from Amanda's side. This is the last stanza. This is because all her imagination was to escape the continuous harassment and dominance of her parents. So, this is the poem. It is a very simple poem. You must have understood all the words. You must have got the meaning of the words. So, why the parenthesis? Some stanzas are in parenthesis. Go back to your text on page 61. You will find stanza 2, 4 and 6 are given in parenthesis. So, there are a few questions for you. Who is the speaker in stanzas 2, 4 and 6? This is what Amanda is thinking when her mother tells her not to bite her nails. She thinks that you know she is being told not to do this, not to do that. She wants to live in the sea like a mermaid. So, here we can say Amanda is the speaker, but she is thinking all these things in her mind. And who is the speaker in stanza 1, 3, 5 and 7? Yes, you have guessed it right, mother or parent. Now, let us understand the poem. I have taken the stanzas which are in parenthesis. There is a languid emerald sea where the sole inhabitant is me, a mermaid drifting blissfully. So, what is Amanda's wish? She imagines herself to be in a deep green sea. She says that she wants to be the only resident of this beautiful green sea. She imagines herself like a mermaid who is alone there and leads her life in a very relaxed way. There is no one to tell her not to bite her nails. She says that she wants to be carried away by the current of water and feel the soothing environment there. Now, stanza 4. This one is also in parenthesis. It says, I am an orphan roaming the street. I pattern soft dust with my hushed bare feet. The silence is golden. The freedom is sweet. She further says that freedom is sweet. This means she never feels free when she is with her mother. But it is not a good wish. You can always talk to your parents. You can always discuss things with them. And sometimes when parents are telling you to do something, they wish you good things in life. They want you to do certain things in life. They want you not to do certain things in life because they are your well wishers. Now another stanza, which is stanza 6. This is also in parenthesis. I am Rapunzel, I have not a care. Life in a tower is tranquil and rare. I will certainly let down, I will certainly never let down my bright hair. So, she does not want anyone to come over there. If you know the story of Rapunzel, you will know that Rapunzel had long hair and with the help of the hair only the prince was able to reach the tower. But she does not want anyone to reach over there. And then of course, in the last stanza, 
Stop that sulking at once, Amanda. You're always so moody, Amanda. Anyone would think that I nagged at you, Amanda. Now I have a few questions for you. What could Amanda do if she were a mermaid? She would have that freedom. Nobody would tell her what to do. Is Amanda an orphan? Why does she say so? She is not an orphan. She wants to be an orphan. But that's not a good wish. Do you know the story of Rapunzel? Why does she want to be Rapunzel? Away from everybody in the tower. So you can read the story of Rapunzel on your own and you will find, you all must be knowing the story of Rapunzel. So these three are her wishes to be away from her nagging parent. Now this poem has used many literary devices. Skillful poetry often uses literary devices and Robin Klein also uses them in her work. Some of the literary devices that are used in this poem are anaphora, repeated use of a word at start of two or more lines. Don't bite your nails, Amanda. Don't hunch your shoulders, Amanda. So don't, don't. Did you finish your homework, Amanda? Did you tidy your room, Amanda? So did, did. Then of course we have the rhyme scheme. The rhyme scheme is A, A, B, A, C, C, D in the first stanza and then continuous. There is a rhyme scheme. Okay. And then the third one is assonance, use of vowel sound O, don't hunch. For example, the words that have been used by the poet are thought, told, you, your, shoes. Then next literary device is repetition, use of word amanda. So with every sentence there is a word amanda, right? There is imagery drifting blissfully. So we can really imagine the sea in front of our eyes, that green sea. She's like a mermaid and she's drifting blissfully, no care, no worry and she's on her own. That is what she wants. The next literary device is alliteration. Stop that slouching and sit up straight. S sound is being repeated at the start of closely placed words. You can find many examples in the poem. I have given you one example. Now you go through the poem on your own and underline the lines where alliteration has been used. You will find many examples. Next literary device that has been used is illusion. Now mermaid is a well known imaginary creature. No one has seen but we all talk about mermaids. So that has been used. Of course, the poet has used the literary device metaphor. Silence is golden. So she is comparing silence with gold. Silence is said to be glorious like golden color. Freedom is sweet. So freedom is said to be sweet in taste. I hope these literary devices are clear to you. Now let us discuss a few comprehension question. Now somebody seems to be speaking to Amanda in this poem and I have been referring to the word mother. Okay. Now most readers think that it is probably her mother. They think this because it is you know general perception that children are taken care of by their mother at home. So we think it is the mother who is talking. But who else could it be if not her mother? Now let us imagine, if it is not her mother who is talking to her, uh, who else could be? Her father? Maybe. Her friend? Certainly not. Her sister? Maybe her elder sister. Her brother? Maybe an elder brother. Her grandparent? Yes, even grandparents can tell the children not to do things which are not good and be disciplined. So we can look at the poem from different angles. 
The next question is how old do you think Amanda is and how do you know this? See Amanda must be about 12 or 13 years old. There are many references to it because you know Amanda is reaching the adolescent age. So she now wants to be free. She does not want to be told anything by her parents and I think all children go through this process. But children you must listen to your parents, they are, they are your well wishes and we must have discipline in life. If we are disciplined, we will get up on time, have our meals on time, go for exercise, finish our homework, study on time, everything will in place and we will be able to do things that we enjoy, we will be able to play, we will be able to watch our favorite programs on TV, we will be able to go out and talk to friends, plus there is a reference that do not eat chocolates you might get acne. So all this indicates that she is about 10, 12 or 13 years old. What is happening in stanzas 2, 4 and 6? Amanda is reading stories, lost in her own world, having a dream, speaking to another person. You have been able to guess it right. She is lost in her own world. She is not listening to her mother. Amanda wants to be in different roles because she wants to avoid her mother, explore the world, be free, be nagged. I am sure you have been able to get the right answer. She wants to avoid her mother. Let us move on. There are a few more questions. Let us discuss these. What could Amanda do if she were a mermaid? Now as a little girl Amanda, she wants to be a mermaid, the only resident of the beautiful green sea. She thinks that her life will be very relaxing in the sea and she will be taken away with the currents of water, she will be able to enjoy her freedom. So the crux is freedom, okay. Next question is, is Amanda an orphan? Why does she say so? Amanda is not an orphan. She is constantly being pointed out by her mother uh, in the poem. So therefore she says that you know it is better to be an orphan and her world would be peaceful, nobody would tell her anything. Next question, what does this girl yearn for and what does this poem tell you about Amanda? This girl Amanda yearns for freedom and peace in her life because she is constantly reminded of her carelessness. These are careless mistakes. Her parents want her to be disciplined. They are doing so because they want their child to be well mannered and obedient but while doing this they forget that she is a child and she should be allowed some freedom. The poet has drawn the reader's attention towards the condition of children who are constantly oppressed by their elders in the name of good behavior. You see excess of everything is bad, everything is nice in moderation. Next question is, read the last answer. Do you think Amanda is sulking and is moody? Now this stanza is different from the rest of the stanzas. We have discussed those stanzas, now let us discuss this one. She feels oppressed because of her mother's constant nagging. She does not want to be pointed out for such small things like cleaning the room, sitting straight, cleaning her shoes, completing her homework etc. She feels that she is not free and is under the constant pressure of being a well behaved girl as her parents demand. So, she is not listening and her mother says you are moody. I hope the poem is clear to you. We do learn a lesson from this poem that we have to be disciplined and it has to be followed right from the beginning. And parents should also 
say things in moderation. They can discuss with the children, right? You must have noticed that in this poem, the poet has used lot of imperatives. Now, what is an imperative? Imperative sentences are those that express order, advice or request. These sentences can be written without a subject. For example, sit up straight, remember your acne. Now, the task for you is go through the poem once again and underline the sentences which have been written in imperative. Okay? But another thing, where do you find imperative sentences around you? Look around you. You find them in parks. Do not pluck flowers. Do not walk on the grass. You find them in hospitals. Do not make noise. You find them in offices. Stand in a queue. So now make a list of these imperative sentences and write why should we follow them. We should follow them, therefore they are there. Some of them which I have written down for you are do not walk on the grass, do not honk, don't pluck flowers, don't litter, use me, no smoking, left turn allowed, no parking, silence please. So, you must add to the list. With this, we have come to the writing part. Replace the name Amanda in this poem and write your own name. A new poem is created and it talks about you. That is one. Or you can change the imperatives also, what your mother or your parents tell you. So, you are creating a new poem from your context. My next task is create your own imaginary world. What you would like to be in place of stanzas 2, 4 and 6. Amanda imagines certain things. She wants to be a mermaid, an orphan or be in a tower. Write your own idea over here. So, you will have created a new poem. Do write these poems. Do you think you are constantly checked and then you become moody? Write your feelings in your own diary. Share them with your elders, teachers to encourage a kind of gentle interaction with them. Or you can ask your elders what instructions, directions were repeated to them and how it affected them. So, a dialogue can be written. And you can actually have a dialogue with your parents. Remember, a little discipline leads to big success. So, play and laugh, but always make time for studies, exercising, meals and timely sleep. With this, we have come to the end of this poem. I want you to read the poem and enjoy it. Thank you.